Evan, a wise man once said, he never sprays on an interior. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is the DIY Detail Podcast. Yes, uh, that wise man would have been me. And no, I don't like spraying chemicals on the interior of a car. I never spray on an interior. The reason we are doing this podcast is because recently I put a little Instagram reel, YouTube short, Facebook reel, whatever you want to call it. It's a vertical video. And it was a little clip of our long form video, which I'll put in the description below. We're sitting there, we're in the truck, we're doing interior detail, prepping it for interior ceramic. And you said something, kind of just an offhanded comment, like, I never spray on interiors. And I mean, I knew this from you, and I'm like, this is kind of interesting. This might get people's attention. And, and then you talk about how you took a cup holder out. Never. No. But you can take these out and throw them in your wash bucket, and they'll be perfectly clean. Let's do it. And you took the cup holder out, and you put it in your rinse's wash bucket, right? So that little yeah. insert, instead of spraying deep down into that hole, and just let it soak in the rinse's wash bucket. It'll do the work for you, lightly wipe it off. But it got me thinking, like, let's talk about some of your OG tips and tricks on interior detailing. And let's just start off with never spraying on interiors and what that's all about. Right, so basically, oh, first of all, uh, we'll back up one little, one little point here. A lot of people on an interior will start with a, a sledgehammer when the, all they need is a nice little finishing hammer. In other words, they're gonna start with the APC and no, do not use a degreaser on an interior. No matter how you mix it, it's still a degreaser. So on your interiors, you if you're having to use an APC, that means it's really, really, really bad. And spraying on an interior, what happens, especially if when you're spraying an APC, you spray it on, let's say that leather seat, where those droplets hit, all of a sudden becomes a lot cleaner than all the area around it. And you have to work really hard to get rid of the, the appearance of those droplets. Also, the more moisture you bring into an interior, the more moisture you have to take out to deliver it to the customer. So spraying on your microfiber towel instead of, or your applicator or whatever you're using, your scrubber, instead of spraying onto the surface is gonna give you a much better, more uniform finish and be a lot safer. Ivan, I have a, a surprise for you. Are you ready for this? Yeah. There's a lot of people on the internet who think that you're full of it when it comes to stuff like this because I read yeah. the comments and I respond to them. So I'm going to I'm going to be the voice of uh, some public opinion and then I'm going to let you respond to it. And I'm also going to say I used to think some of these things were true as well. And here's where I've come around. Yeah. Rinseless wash in a bucket. You put rinseless wash in a bucket 256 to 1. You get a rag. You dunk it in there, you wring it out, right? Yeah. That on the turn signal knobs and all these switches like I used to always grab steam, magic eraser, all-purpose cleaner to get all the grease and grime off all these knobs, you know, your right. signals and everything. And I, I watched you use just rinseless wash on a rinseless wash dampened towel and just agitate it with patience yeah. and it comes off. So, right. so to the people out there who say, you must never detail dirty cars or this is so much baloney, I've, you know, this guy needs to go. What? Like people yeah. say all the mean things. Oh, yeah. To them, I will say I've tried your tips and tricks. The only thing I would say is I like to have the rinseless wash bucket and then I'll hang a, a bottle of, of all-purpose cleaner, so um, uh, all clean at 30 yeah. to 1 on the bucket. And when I need it, I'll grab it off the bucket and I'll, and I'll spray it into my towel, maybe on a nasty steering wheel. Um, but for the most part, and I'll just do one more thing that I, I've learned from you that I used to doubt and I think is great. You have compressed air, and compressed air is your friend. So you take your rinseless wash damp and towel, and you put it over the air vent, yep. and you just spray that into the air vent over the towel. It, it's brilliant. So uh, you know there are haters out there, Ivan. I used to be someone who was a little skeptical. I've, I've really come around. I probably use All Clean at 30 to 1 more than you would do on an interior. Yeah. And I do spray occasionally into those cup holders uh, and, and, and into the car. Uh, but just so you know, there's folks out there who feel this way. I want to yeah. give you the floor now to respond. Well, first of all, rinseless wash is pretty much all you need for an interior. Uh, it is a formidable cleaner. It does a great job. And try it before you discount it. Try it yep. before you go, oh, I'm yep. going to start with the APC. No, no. Start with a rinseless wash, and you will be extremely surprised as to how much dirt it can actually remove from an interior. Now, what we have on the interiors hopefully, not caked on mud. Sure, there might be some candy bar juice. There might be some burger uh, 
remnants. There might be some fry greasiness on the steering wheel, on the shifter, on the console. Again, it's incredible what a surfactant-based rinseless can remove. And the DIY- Are rinseless. Yeah, our yeah. rinseless is surfactant-based and they're high quality surfactants. So they're gonna go out after that and get rid of that dirt, but safely. It's not gonna remove the white lettering on the turn signal stocks. And I've seen too many people do that in the past with an APC or a degreaser. Those inks are not that durable. <laughs> they're not designed for that. Uh, if you have an older Audi or Volkswagen, the switches can get really gummy uh, if you use an APC or a degreaser on them. It basically breaks down that rubber almost instantly, and now you have sticky knot, you know, sticky buttons everywhere. Uh, and the only way to fix that is to change them. And there, are, they actually sell kits on, uh, you know, eBay and places like that to fix Volkswagen and Audi knobs because they have a tendency to do that. Tell me about because until you've used our rinseless wash, this is not your mom's rinseless wash like this thing no. <laughs> like i think the first buzz we really started getting from people when we came out more than a year ago was whoa like i your rinseless wash really cleans really well like i've tried a lot of other ones and some maybe feel a little bit slicker or some maybe do this or do that or polymer based yeah. or blah, blah all the jargon i'm just telling you people were telling us like this stuff really clean i'm i'm using rinseless on my wheel faces and it's doing a great job and so it's like our rinseless has a nice kick to it, but it also feels right. very safe. Um, yeah. Could you talk about the the rag over the air compressor, over the vent yeah, with the air over compressor? The so yeah, basically anywhere you would normally use steam. So around the emblem on the steering wheel, uh, in the switches that you know the uh, vents. Basically, you're using compressed air and a rinseless dampened, not wet, dampened towel to create the the equivalent of steam, basically but we're using the rinseless wash to do the job. So on that vent, you're gonna blow through the towel and that's gonna create a mist of rinseless wash in there. And what it does is it bounces off the, the air bounces it off the vent and back onto the towel. So the towel actually gets dirty. It's absorbing 90% of that dirt. And then with your rinseless wash, or sorry, with your compressor, blow it again once you've taken the towel away to dry it. Excuse me. Oh, <coughs> oh. bless you. Allergy season. Uh, yes, anyways. indeed. No, you were talking about the air compressor trick. So, yeah, uh, a comment that recently stuck with me on on Facebook that I responded to was about you must never clean dirty interiors. And I I like to meet people where they are because when there's enough yeah. smoke, there's fire. And I mean that by even if they don't believe in your methods, Ivan, these are people in the real world cleaning cars, and these are their experiences. Right. And whether things have worked for them or not, they know those more intimately than anyone online over a screen can tell them how to do it, right? Because this exactly. is our life, right? They're like, that's why I think having a detailed product brand in our company, like these products are like an intimate part of people's lives. If they work for them in the trenches, so to speak, then yep. that's what builds loyalty. So like people get emotional about detailing products for a reason. I totally get it. Like if we can be there by their side and help them win, then they're really grateful for that. But they care deeply about this stuff, and I get it. So, But when they say, like, you've never cleaned a dirty car and this doesn't work, what I've responded to recently is you'd be so surprised what compressed air and the rinseless wash damp and towel can do. So it's not like you never spray on interior. I think having compressed air meets you somewhere in the middle there. I mean, do you think yeah. never spraying on interior with no compressed air, to me, that I'm like, how are you really... I mean, you could do it, but... A really dirty car, um, I feel like you do need air. Uh, air is probably one of the most useful tools you can have in interior detailing. Uh, and you don't need a tornador, you don't need all sorts of attachments for it, just a standard blow nozzle and your rinseless damp and towel will do incredible things. Mm -hmm. And as far as never cleaning dirty interiors, uh, yes, I've cleaned my fair share of dirty interiors. Uh, in my shops, we did a lot of work for dealerships, which meant trade-ins, which meant mm. auction cars, which meant, uh, you know, all sorts of fun uh, or not fun things. But I had a team of people dedicated to doing interiors. They loved doing interiors. They were efficient at doing interiors, and they did a, a spectacular job. One of them was my son. And if you gave them the choice of driving home the customer's Ferrari or cleaning the mommy minivan that the family's lived in for six years, he would have picked the minivan. So that's just how much he enjoys cleaning interiors. And 
all I ever saw him use on an interior was a rinseless wash, dampened towel. And very, very, very rarely would he bring in the bottle of APC and spray it on his rinseless, dampened towel to get to a stain. Can I tell you something I've been playing around with recently, and I, I already know you're not going to like it, which is why I'm bringing it up, because I want the people to feel the, the drama in the air. You ready for mm-hmm. this? So yep. I take the legacy sponge in my rinseless wash bucket, so it's just sitting there, right? And I yeah. wring it out as dry as I possibly can. And then, because I used to be a magic eraser guy. Like, I love magic eraser on interior windshields because I feel like sometimes for that first pass, they just need something extra. Like, I even watched a Pan the Organizer video recently, and he talked about, I think, using Dawn dish soap for the first pass on an interior windshield. I think the idea is sometimes you need brute force to get through that film. Right. And uh, I use the Legacy sponge, and I don't know if it's the foam or whatever, but totally ringed out. I don't want to be dripping anywhere, and it, it can get a little sloppy. So, again, don't try this at home. Yeah. But I've been trying it on the interior windshield, and I find that it leaves it leaves the polymer residue behind, obviously, after that first pass. But when I go to do my final wipe down with the windows, streak-free, completely clean, whatever it is with that sponge, I feel like it cuts through the grime, and then I just do my final wipe down. Now, I like seven steps where Ivan likes one. Just right. Uh, but I'd like to, again, give you the floor and see, what do you think about this method? Because I like it's to try okay. things. We know people like to try right. things. It's okay, but it's messy. If you're it wanting to, messy. if you're wanting to break through that film, and the windshields have a lot of film from off-casting plastic, so all that dash, all the inside of the uh, the heating and the air conditioning system, is bringing all sorts of weird stuff onto your windows. Mm. And to get that off, yes, just a, a nice microfiber towel may not be enough. What I like to use is our interior towel, which has one side that's super soft, and the other side that has a little more aggression to it. Yep. And it's that aggressive side that does the job. The other aspect where people go a little overboard is, as far as I'm concerned, is glass towels. You don't need special glass towels. Glass towels are fun. They're nice to have. Uh, you know, it, it gives you something to do. It's an extra process. And as hobbyists, we love having more tools and things to do. But a low nap towel, whether it be a waffle weave, whether it be an old demoted towel that you're you won't even use on wheels and door jams anymore that to me is a great glass towel and totally. one yeah and one last tip for glass and this really freaks people out until they actually try it don't look at the glass while you're cleaning it because if you look at it your eyes are telling you hey dude it's clean stop you're good your hand if you're not looking at it, can actually feel where there's still resistance, where there's still dirt on the window. And that goes for the cleaning stage as well as the drying. So I like to do my windows basically two towels, one just very, very lightly dampened, so almost dry, because the more moisture you put on the glass, the more moisture you need to remove. And then the second window, or the second one, just a dry towel. And the older the towel, the more abused it is in a sense, the better it is because it doesn't have any lint to give up anymore. It's it, it's left it all out on the field. Yeah, exactly. Uh, metaphorically speaking. No, and I, I agree with you that the legacy sponge method is messy. So you wring it out completely. But then yeah. even when you do the windshield, like you're leaving the residue, the polymer residue behind. Maybe it's because I dilute the rinseless too heavily, but I, I don't mean to. Um, but for me, I can see where I've been, you know? So I can see where I've been. And then I make my final pass with my rinseless wash damp and towel and then a dry towel. Right. If you do seven steps on an interior windshield out there, please comment below and say, Nick, I'm with you. <laughs> I know I haven't smart, but I feel your passion and I understand it. Um, Cause there's nothing more satisfying. I love it. I love a clean. I just hate the streaks on a windshield. And I'm yeah, always exactly. like, how do I, how do I not use the magic eraser? Cause you got to buy those things. They break down. They're not tent safe. Like the melanin sponge can be a dangerous thing. We don't want to promote that. So no. that's why I was like, I wonder if the legacy sponge would work. But anyway, yeah. I digress. The other, the other thing is, is our crystal clear glass cleaner. Yeah. Uh, if you're having problems like Nick, where you tend to over dilute your rinseless a little bit and it gets streaky, a very easy way to solve that is don't use the rinseless on your glass. Just use it. Use the, uh, the crystal clear. It does a great job and it's simple to use. And again, don't spray it on the window, spray it onto your towel. 
we've talked about like spots people miss on interiors before. What do you yeah. think um, the biggest waste of time is when people do interiors? Like how do they waste the time the most that you think they can improve on? So recently in a video, I use something for the first time and I've been detailing for over 40 years and I've resisted the urge to use these because I never bought any. And those are the nice little detailing brushes. Really? Yeah. The first time I'd ever used a brush on an interior other than okay. doing carpets and upholstery. And honestly, I wouldn't use it again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just, if you have compressed air, you don't need the brush to get into places, first of all. Secondly, it's a real waste of time and a waste of product. And I get it. You see it on the TikTok videos and the Instagram videos where they take the cleaner, they put way too much on the surface, then they take the brush in nice little circles and it foams up and it looks really cool. Yes, it looks really cool. It takes a lot of time. And again, the more moisture you're putting on that surface, the more moisture you have to remove. And our interior clean and protect, if you want it to foam up like that with your brush, by all means, it will do that. It will do it gracefully. But it's a real waste of time and product because you're using way too much product you're using too much time and your results are not any better. So when should somebody use interior clean and protect versus rinseless wash? I mean, I have my opinions on this, but we have a dedicated interior product. So I'd love right. to hear from you because I, again, I read all the comments, right? People ask yeah. this question. What, what would your official answer be? If you wash the outside with rinseless, then just keep going into the inside. If you wash the outside with incredible suds, don't mix up a bucket of rinseless, just grab your bottle of interior clean and protect. If you drive a convertible, this is where it becomes important. Interior clean and protect is what you should be using because of the UV protection. In a car that isn't a convertible, what most of us drive, you don't need UV protection. Your windows give you 100% UV protection. So as long as you drive with your windows up and your sunroof closed, you don't have UV inside your car. If your uh, window's down, sunroof open, or top down with a convertible, then yes, then you need interior clean and protect for that additional UV protection. What do you think the best advice for people who are just starting out detailing would be? Because there's a difference between production detailing and the guy who's just starting out and trying to just wow every customer but they're spending eight hours on interiors like because they're going to get the nastiest interiors. They're going to want to impress yeah. their clients. They may not know what they don't know, uh, but you coach a lot of beginner detailers. So what is your best advice besides not using a brush uh, for them? Well, I know in the past you've said film yourself so you can, and I never did that. That's probably why yeah. I never got fast at interiors. But you said film yourself to watch, you know, how many efficiency gaps there are. But I mean, what, what other advice do you have for people? Because that's the biggest thing for interiors. They just take so much dang time. Being methodical, and this is something that, you know, that video you, you mentioned of us doing the interior of the truck. If you watch that video, you'll notice that, Nick, you go over the, um, uh, the vent right by the door about eight times. And it's just because yeah, you're You make me anxious doing interior. I like to get in my zone. I like to my music. I, I can't have Ivan watching me. Like, that's kind of like I'm just kind of clean into this. That's my, in my defense, uh, judge. No, like, you're stressed out. I know. I, no, but, but no, I, I'm an artist on the interior. I'm not a profitable detailer. Okay. Uh, but that's my excuse as well. Cause I did see that and I did go over that vent eight times and it probably was clean the first time. I probably got a dirtier going over that many times, but no. But nonetheless, that being said, being methodical and having a process to go through and do, I start here and I finish here. And once you get that process down, you won't be haphazardly going all over the place. Instead, you'll be focused. You'll be focused, and you'll be going through. Like you mentioned, filming yourself. It doesn't need to be a you know a Emmy award winning video. It's not going to be. You're the only one going to be watching it. Maybe have someone else watch it with you so they can ask you questions. Hey, why are you doing this? Or why did you do this eight times? Or why did you not touch this area? Et cetera, et cetera. And in watching that, you'll be able to figure out what's missing or what's what are you doing too much of in your method. And like I said, being methodical is probably the most important part of doing interiors. And efficiency actually breeds quality. So the more efficient you are and the more methodical you are, the higher quality output you're going to do.
because you're guaranteeing that you're touching everything, that you're going over everything. And one final thing, and this is something that a lot of beginner detailers really waste a lot of time on, and that is stains. Mm. Now, there are ways of getting stains out, but remember the word is stain. It's not dirt. Dirt, we need to remove 100% from the interior. Grime, we can remove 100% from the interior. Stains, we may not be able to do it. If you've been working on a stain for 15 minutes and it hasn't budged, the extra two hours you're going to spend working on that stain is not going to change anything. It might actually damage the interior more. And the word stain, again, it says it. If you take stain to a piece of wood, what do you have to do to remove that stain? You have to dig down into the wood about an eighth of an inch because the stain is penetrated. And yep. fabric, carpets, even leather can be stained. And once it's stained, there's no way of getting that stain out other than actually removing the material that's stained. So, yes, there are chemicals that can help, but they may not be able to get it 100%. And I would say for sure, you know, kind of being very passionate about carpet cleaning, like, yeah, don't worry about red. If you see a red stain and your first pass of whatever you're choosing to use, whether you're extracting it out or drill brushing or, you know, within the first couple steps, if you see that red is not moving at all, know that there are ways to do it that don't always work. There are multiple steps. It's like a terry cloth with an iron and then a second product and then an extract, like... And even then, like some of the best spotters in the carpet cleaning industry don't get the red out. Sometimes no. it's just stained and it's not your fault, as Ivan says. And letting yeah. go of that stress is really important. And and customers tend to understand, right? They've had cars, or I mean, they've had shirts and clothes that have stained in the past. They get what red and purple uh, might be in terms of permanent stains, but especially red. Exactly. Yeah. So what is your advice for like, I'm thinking about a, a mommy van, right? Or a daddy van, yeah. whatever. We're not going to discriminate. Yeah, there are nooks and crannies behind the third seats, right? You you flip something up, all of a sudden the crease in between where the seats move, there's there's more dog hair, there's more grime, there's stuff along yeah. the 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 running whatever like in in the back. Like it just never tends to end. Are there places where you can just say, I'm "Not touching that," and I'll leave that alone that the customer will never see? Like, how no. do we save time on a like because you could spend an hour under the back seats that no one will ever see, or maybe you flip the seat up and then there's a whole new world of germs and candy that maybe yeah. they never flip. Like what do we do with those spots? Cause those aren't the cockpit areas that everyone sees and they can suck up so much time. If your customer is paying you to clean the interior, you clean the interior, which means you go over absolutely every square inch or centimeter, depending on where you're from of that interior cutting corners and not doing things is not a good way of saving time. Saving time comes through efficiency. Saving time comes through being methodical. Saving time comes from not going over the same area twice. It's not from cutting corners. And if you cut corners, you're not giving your customer the job they're paying for. So with an interior, and in my shops, we did not do a quick express interior. That was not on our menu never was and would never be if I still owned a shop. The reason for that is my technicians were trained to clean interiors. And by cleaning interiors, that means they do every square inch of that interior. If it's openable, they'll open it. If it's movable, they'll move it. Uh, basically, they're touching every part of that interior. And we explain that to customers one very simple way. My technicians are trained to do the best interior they can. And if you say you just want a, a quick wipe down, they can't stop themselves. They know that an interior means I touch every surface. I get every dog hair out of there. I get all of that out of there. And dog hair, one, two yeah, little Yeah, let's your dog hair tips. Yeah, so two things for dog hair. There's a lot of tools available out there, and most of them work. And they're good to have. The other thing is, if you have time on your side, get some fabric softener, dilute it 10 to 1, and get the unscented kind because the scented kind can get really, really scented. Uh, unscented fabric softener, spray it on the surface and let it dry. So this is an overnight thing. So you spray it on the carpet, it breaks the static bond, making the dog hair easier to vacuum. If dog hair, the customer... You know, they're coming to you to detail the car. You need to determine one thing. 
is the dog going back in the car? Mm. If the dog is going back in the car, there's no point in you spending an inordinate amount of time to remove every last little speck of dog hair. You want to get the majority of it up and explain this to the customer. I can get the majority of, of it up and it's going to take me an hour. Or I can spend five hours getting every little last dog hair. Literally so five dog, hours. I mean, yeah. it, it, it like the, the key, if you're an enthusiast out there and you're wondering how to get dog hair out of your own vehicle because you take your time. dog hiking every week, it's just that much of a pain. That's why you don't like it and you're just trying to find answers. It just takes time. Yeah. Stone, compressed air, um, little plastic tools. They've got all different shapes. The fur reel, all these different things. They all yeah. help. They yeah. all help. But sometimes it's just hard freaking work. And by the way, it's not a pumice stone. It's recycled plastic. Uh, it oh, looks it? like a pumice stone, but it's not pumice. Pumice uh, is more is like more aggressive, right? Pumice is a rock that you use on calluses. Yeah. So uh, it look, yeah, it's, it's yeah. They're, they're just recycled plastic. They look like they look like a pumice stone. That's why people call them that. But in reality, they're not a pumice stone. That being said, and those can scratch hard oh, they, plastic, and they can they're, just tear up your carpet too. It can change yeah. the appearance of it visually. Yeah. Yeah. So. But using, uh, you know, the fabric softener diluted 10 to one, let it sit. That's going to give you time. But again, ask the customer, is the dog going back in to the vehicle? If they're selling the vehicle and they're wanting to trade it in, they're wanting to sell it, then yes, you want to get as much of that dog hair out as you can. But if they're just going to go home and the dog's going to get right back in that back seat again, then there's no point in getting, getting all of it. Uh, we had one vehicle that we did every week in our shop that the owner was a, uh, not a veterinarian, but a dog grooming place, uh, grooming and boarding. She was transporting multiple dogs every day in her car. She just wanted to get the, the majority of it out. So she wasn't coming to us to do an interior detail every week. She was coming to us just for a quick dog hair removal. And she knew, we knew that the agreement is we are going to spend half an hour on your interior. We're going to charge you $75 and what we get out is what we get out. But doing it on a weekly basis, her car actually stayed really clean. Yeah. That's like dog a dog hair good... didn't have time yeah. to work in, even though she was, you know, there was 50 dogs that had been into that vehicle that week. We got a lot of that dog hair out. And what we would do is spray the fabric softener on when she left. So the next time she came oh. in, that you know, static resistance is there. It's going to help. There's so much to talk about for interiors. When do you do headliners, and do you have any advice for cleaning them and advice for what not to do on headliners? Yeah. So headliners, only do them if you absolutely have to. Uh, they're a very, very cheap material to begin with, <clears throat> and that cheap material is held on to a piece of cardboard, basically, with foam. And any sort of humidity, heat, or pressure is breaking down that very thin layer of foam. So if you want to, and this is something I suggest to people that insist that I'm going to extract a headliner. No, you don't extract a headliner. Go to a scrapyard, pull the headliner out of the car, bring it home, and play with it and just see how much damage you're doing to that headliner if you're taking an extractor to it or if you're taking a steamer to it. Uh, basically, if I have to clean a headliner, I'm going to use either the rinseless wash or interior clean protect, just a towel dampened with it, and lightly go over the surface, and then go over it dry again. But no pressure, and I'm not getting it wet. I really want to ask you about odor removal, like smoke, and because I feel like, I never quite have figured that out, and nor have I gone to any you know insurance courses for it. I feel like if you really want to learn odor remediation, you go to like an IICRC class. Yeah. And folks out there, if you know what that is, you know. But I don't right. remember the abbreviation, but it's an official agency that you get trained and licensed with so you can do flood, fire, mold, whatever. But one of them yeah. is odor. And I always wanted to like take that class because I feel like I would learn so much because I don't know what I don't know about odor. But right. if, if a beginner detailer gets a customer and says, hey, can you get the smoke out of my car? They're probably going to be like, sure, yeah, I can do that. What, Ivan, would you advise, would you give to anybody out there who, who's trying to remove smoke odor out of a car? Because no matter what anybody says, 
I've never gotten a hundred percent. Like it's it's no, it's part there. of it is cabin air filter. Part of it it's there, and I feel like it just needs to have open windows for three years of driving before it's gonna totally kind of go away. Even if you clean it right. But go ahead. Yeah. So there's a few things you can do. One of them is an enzyme based odor removal cleaner, and you don't put it on a dirty surface. So the first thing you have to do is completely clean the interior. And that means every hard and soft surface, you're going over that. The next thing is using that enzyme. And what the enzyme does is it goes after the odor and just keeps eating and eating and eating away. And it takes time. So you're gonna spray the enzyme on. Uh, some of them are scented, some are unscented, but basically you spray it on and then you close up the interior you want that fog in there. And we literally used a fogger to fog the interior, the headliner, the dash, under the dash. So all that wiring and all that stuff under the dash, uh, the seats, we would fog under the seats as well because you want to get the fog in everywhere. Once that's done, close the doors, put it outside in the sun and let it sit and the enzymes now start working away and eating away at that odor. Tell your customer that I'm not going to remove the odor. I'm going to reduce it. And mm. it's going to take a little longer for it to go away. But if you're using a good enzyme cleaner, and this was an interesting story, we had a customer that uh, she brought her husband's car in because she wanted to celebrate the fact that he quit smoking. So she paid to have his interior, so she get rid of that smoke odor in the car so he wasn't tempted to smoke again, blah, blah, blah. Brought it home. The next day, he calls us and says, what did you do to my car? I can't drive it. And the reason he couldn't drive it was every time he got in the car, his lungs would start burning. And those are the enzymes breaking down the nicotine. So we gave the customer two choices stop smoking or tell your wife that you've started smoking again and drive her car for two weeks while the enzymes, you know, go away and break down. So in other words, wow. yeah, uh, he kept on smoking and the enzymes kept on working inside his car in his lungs. So that is one of the things that you need to be careful of. A lot of people will use ozone and ozone. I've tried it many times, it works, but it's more of a temporary fix than a long-term fix. And using, I've seen people using ozone, they didn't read the instructions and it's very apparent they didn't read the instructions because they set the ozone machine on the floor. Ozone will only clean anything that's below the machine. Ozone is heavier than air. So if you're using an ozone machine, the best way to do it on a car is put it on the roof and pipe it in through the sunroof because now it's going to fill the cabin with ozone. But like I said, ozone is heavier than air. So if you put it on the floor, it's not going up higher than the floor, despite the fact that you have the fans and all that on. So ozone is a, it works, but it works uh, not as efficiently as the ozone manufacturer machine guys will tell you that it does. Well, and this is the thing is you may know a little bit just enough to be dangerous, right? But if you want to know a lot and be like a pro at this, I was always so fat. I always wanted to do this. I did all the courses, paint correction, yeah. detailing. I never did this because I always wanted to take it to the next level. But IICRC, Institute of Inspection, Cleaning, and Restoration Certification. And they yes. have an odor control technician course, no prerequisites. The odor control technician certification covers olfaction and odor, odor sources, detection process, theory of odor control, equipment, chemical options, and applications. And then you're going to be able to demonstrate how to address odors caused by biological sources such as decomposition, ugh, ugh, urine contamination, yeah. mold, which we see on the detail forums all the time. And obviously nobody knows what they're talking about because they're like, just do yeah. this. And no one has a mask on combustion sources such as fire and smoke damage and chemical sources such as fuel, oil spills or volatile organic chemicals. Wouldn't it be yeah. cool to talk to your customer having taken this course? Probably really expensive equipment and chemicals. I don't know. But like no, have those very, options. Yeah. It's actually a very simple course. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yeah. Basically, and you can go, you know, that course, they're probably offered online now. Yeah. Uh, after COVID. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when I took it like 25 years ago, uh, it wasn't the IRCRC. It was the Canadian version of them. But nonetheless, 
it was just basically you have to clean every surface mm -hmm. and knowing what chemicals to use for that particular surface or that particular odor because different chemicals will re react different ways with different odors. Since the time I've taken the course, technology has evolved and we have the enzyme-based odor removal products. And those really make odor removal easy, simple, and um, not foolproof, but it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to do and your results will be better than the old ways. Ivan, we've rambled on long enough. We'll yep. do more interior detailing videos and podcasts. I know we will, but we hope that the folks out there who listened enjoyed this. I, I always uh, used to listen to you on podcasts when I was in the detailing trenches. So I, I hope that this is one of those things you can just pop into your your uh, AirPods or whatever you're doing and, and you're yep. detailing and you're learning and we answer every comment on YouTube. So if you're listening there, please do subscribe, like the video and uh we'll chat with you there but what else can they do ivan if they're listening somewhere else or or if they want to reach out enjoy have fun guys uh, yeah exactly